Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here with Chegg. In this video, we're going to discuss trigonometric substitution. So on the screen here, you see all three substitutions. So if you have the square root of a squared minus x squared, you let x equal a sine theta. That's the substitution you make, and then go from there. If you have the square root of a squared plus x squared, you would let x equal a tan theta. And the last one is the square root of x squared minus a squared, you would let x equal a secant theta. So with these three substitutions, in theory, you should be able to do any problem. Let's go ahead and start by doing an example. So here's our example. We have the indefinite integral of one divided by x squared times the square root of four minus x squared. Let's go ahead and work through this solution. So right away, you notice the piece here with the square root. So you can write that piece as follows. So instead of four minus x squared, you can write it as the square root of two squared minus x squared. And now you see it matches the first formula, the square root of a squared minus x squared with a equal to two. So according to our formula, the substitution is equal to a sine theta. So x is equal to a sine theta. So in our case, that means that x is equal to two sine theta. Okay, so now we're going to differentiate both sides of this equation. So we get dx equals two, and the derivative of sine is cosine. So two cosine theta, d theta. So we have that, that's useful. I'm gonna put that in a box because we're gonna need that. Now we need to think about the rest of the integral. What are we gonna do with all of the x's? Well, we can take the square root of four minus x squared and we can mess around with it like this. We have the square root of four minus x squared. This is equal to the square root of four. Now basically we take our x and we plug it in. So minus two sine theta squared. Some people memorize all of this, which I'm doing. I prefer to just work it out every time. This is the square root of four minus, you square the two, you get four. And this is sine squared. And it's gonna work out the same way every time, but I think it's good to be able to do the math. Here you can pull out a four. So you get the square root of four, square root of one minus sine squared. And then square root of four is two, and one minus sine squared is cosine squared. So we get cosine squared here. And then this is going to be two cosine theta. Technically it's two absolute value cosine theta, but you can just pretend it's positive. We don't have limits of integration anyways. So the square root of four minus x squared is equal to two cosine theta. I'm gonna put that in a box because that's important. And now we're ready to make the substitution. I'm gonna go back to white. So we have, so this is equal to integral of, so the dx is two cosine theta d theta. That's out here on the right. So I'm gonna put that up top. It's gonna to be two cosine theta d theta, okay? over, and then on the bottom, we've got x squared. That's just gonna be two sine theta squared. So parentheses two sine theta squared. Okay, that's our x squared. So we've got the dx, we've got the x squared, all that's been replaced. Now we just have to replace the square root. Well, we worked that out, it's down here in yellow. That's parentheses two cosine theta, beautiful. Notice how careful we did it, right? We just did each little piece. You identify the formula, you make your substitution, compute your dx, work out the piece with the square root, and then just carefully plug everything back in. Usually you get some really good cancellation like we just did here. What a nice problem, this is great. And this is d theta over four sine squared theta. So this is equal to, I'm gonna pull out the one fourth, and then one over sine squared is actually cosecant squared theta d theta because one over sine is cosecant. So this is equal to one fourth and integrating cosecant squared, you get negative cotangent. That's because the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. You get negative cotangent theta plus C, which is equal to negative one fourth cotangent theta plus C. And 
you would think, oh, we're done, <laughs> but we're not, right? We're not. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our original substitution, x equals 2 sine theta, and we're going to draw a triangle to finish the problem. So these problems are really intimidating when you first see them because they're so long. It's probably the longest thing you've done up until this point in mathematics. Um, but it's good for you. It's really good. I like this problem. So x is equal to 2 sine theta. Once you do one of these on your own, you feel really accomplished. So go back to your original substitution, x equals 2 sine theta, and solve for the sine of theta. Okay, so I'm going to divide by 2 and write it like this. Sine theta equals x over 2. And now use something very beneficial. It's so ka toa. So ka toa. And you can use this to draw a triangle. So I'm going to draw a triangle here like this. And then here's our theta. This is a right triangle, even though it looks a little bad. And uh, sine of theta is so, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta is x over 2, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is x, hypotenuse is this one here, 2. Let's call this one b, and then we can solve for b using the Pythagorean theorem, which says that the hypotenuse squared, 2 squared, is equal to x squared plus b squared. So subtracting uh, x squared from both sides, we get b squared equals 4 minus x squared. Take the square root, you get a plus or minus. You only want the plus. So 4 minus x squared. I like to fill it in. So after you solve for it, you do some basic math. Solve for it using the Pythagorean theorem. Fill in the triangle, okay? It makes it so much easier, okay? Now we go back here. And this is negative one fourth. We have to think about cotangent now. So tangent is oa. So this is going to be ao, right? Because cotangent of theta, it's one over tangent. So it's a over o. So adjacent is the square root of four minus x squared. Over and then opposite is going to be x plus c. And that would be the final answer to this problem. Pretty intense. And this is one of the easier ones. A lot of these problems are a little bit more challenging, like they'll require some identities or something when you get to this last step. So this is a moderately simple uh, example. Let's go ahead and just recap what we did from the beginning just to make sure you got it. So when you see one of these problems uh, where there's a trig sub, you have to identify which substitution. And honestly, you don't want to use this method unless you have to because obviously it's longer than other integration methods. It's, it's the longest one you've learned up to this point. So you start by identifying the substitution. So you look at the square root piece. And so in this case here, a was two and x was two sine theta and we use the first formula. It won't always be a square root. For example, if you had something like, you know, four minus x squared to the three halves, um, you can write that as a square root, and you could still use uh, the substitution. It would still work, okay? So you could still use trig sub on something like this. But that does occur sometimes. Then you find your dx, and then you want to work out the square root piece, which in our case was the square root of 4 minus x squared. So you work that out, and you plug in your x, and it's always the same. A lot of books, you know, give the formula for it. I always work it out. I think it's good for you. Just It's good to do the math. And so you see the math. There's your square root. And then once you have your square root piece figured out and your dx piece figured out, the ones I have in boxes, you go back to your integral and you plug everything in. We replaced our x with 2 sine theta. Our dx was here in the numerator. It's 2 cosine theta d theta. And our square root piece was 2 cosine theta. The 2 cosine theta is canceled. We were left with this pretty integral here. 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. And then we integrated cosecant squared and we got negative cotangent. We cleaned it up and we got negative 1 fourth cotangent theta plus c. Once you're there, okay, that's when you want to um, draw a triangle, which we did over here. We used Sokotoa, and we used our original substitution. So you solve for your trig function, use Sokotoa, and draw your triangle and solve it. Uh, it's pretty easy. I went through that pretty quickly. Basically, 2 squared is equal to x squared plus b squared, and then I subtracted x squared. So 4 minus x squared is over here on the right. Take the square root. You do get a plus or minus, but it can't be minus because it's the length of the side of a triangle, so it can't be negative. Fill in the triangle, right? Fill it in. Super helpful because in more complicated problems, it'll help a lot. And then um, we use the fact that cotangent is AO because it's the opposite of OA for tangent. It's 1 over tangent. So you go backwards. We filled it in, and that's it. So kind of an interesting problem. 
Hopefully you've learned some math and this video has helped you. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out more videos on Chegg. Until next time, good luck and take care.